The return of Russell T Davies to the position of lead writer of Doctor Who was heralded by so many as a sign that the show was going to return to the good old days, the very man himself who oversaw the initial revival of the show. The man who built it up to being the most popular program in the world at one time. This was long before the dark days of Chris Chibbles using his power of amateur writing to destroy the very essence of what was a staple of British programming. Um, um, Not that you need reminding, but remember that Chibbles is a man who oversaw modern day political messaging, diversity and equity inclusion, as well as story degradation on a scale that we believe could not be outmatched. We've still got to fix you two, because the Metacrisis might have slowed down, but that thing is wrapped around your cortex. Yes, we know. We know everything. Thanks. And you know nothing. It's a shame you're not a woman anymore. Because you'd have understood. We've got all that power, but there is a way to get rid of it. Something a male-presenting Time Lord will never understand. FUCKING PRONOUNS! RTD has entered the chat. <laughs> There are many people who review pop culture, and there are many people, again, that have opinions both for and against such messaging. And sometimes, I will admit, there are times people read into situations that are entirely innocent. However, this is not such an example. I can summarize the plot of this special very, very simply. A ship crashes containing what is believed to be an alien creature being hunted for devious reasons. More on that in a moment but is in fact an escaped prisoner and is attempting to repair their ship at the expense of the whole city of London in order to return to the stars to begin their need for conquest once again. It sounds all very simple and family friendly, right? Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. The problem with this simply from a storytelling perspective is that if they had stuck to the plot of the episode and solely the plot, it would not have taken one hour to showcase. It would have been more like, hmm, 20 minutes, because the remaining portion of the episode had things like this. And now I've got a nice life, with a nice fella and a nice house, and the most beautiful daughter in the world. Say what? No, still Donna Noble. She refused to be Noble Temple, because she says it sounds, sounds like, like an, an old room. And Rose Noble too. It's never gonna win that battle. What do I care? Got the best two girls in the world, mate. Are you sure? Hey, Jason, you all right? Oh, looking good, Jason. Well, give us a kiss, Joe boy. Oh, no. Anyway, last week... I never know. When I say she looks gorgeous, is that right? I mean, is it sexist? Never said it to him when he was... That's what happens. You have a kid, you think, good, I've got it, that's mine. And then she grows up into this extraordinary, beautiful thing, and you think, where the hell did she come from? Yeah. My sentiments exactly. The way I would describe the episode is exactly how the BBC and RTD himself has described it. The BBC says, although the show has always been progressive, a term that means different things to different people, look at the number of stories over the decades about, for example, threats to the environment. This special is preachy, and by the end, little more than a delivery system for the message. RTD himself said that Doctor Who was not for children. True, he was talking about scary stuff, but trust me, judging by some of this dialogue, <laughs> It's pretty scary. In my opinion, this show represents the pinnacle of what a diversity policy looks like. You have your non-gendered language. Yes, the meep. I promise I can help him get home and then you'll never see me again. You're assuming he as a pronoun. True. Yes, sorry, good point. Jesus Christ. You have inclusion of many varieties. Evening, boys. <laughs> I don't just fire darts, mate. You have references to social courses like the fur trade. We want you dead. The Wolf Warriors, they cultivate meat kind for our beautiful fur. But then the galaxy said, no more fur, it's wrong. 
to the Wrath Warriors slaughtered their livestock. Essentially, this is not an episode of Doctor Who, it's a Labour Party broadcast. I half expect Doctor Who to go the same route as a Star Trek Discovery and have an actual politician playing a politician in the episode. But truth be told, I don't need to tell you all these things because those of you who are actually awake and not <clears throat> that other word, you have already begun to let your feelings be known about it via Rotten Tomato scores and various posts on Twitter. The hashtag RIP Doctor Who was trending for quite a while. On Rotten Tomatoes at the time of filming this review, the score stands at a pathetic, measly 53%, and the individual reviews can be cut straight down the middle between those who support identity politics and those who do not. I would just like to point out that it says 100% of critics like this, and with only 5 reviews. Hmm. But those reviews are nowhere to be seen. I wonder why that is. Whereas ordinary members of the public on the site had things like this to say. From John B. Geller, So we have a 20 year old man playing a 14 year old, 15 at a push, that has fully transitioned, thought no one had surgeries under 16, this is true in Great Britain, I thought people were not pushing this on children, again that's what they say. From a user called Ink Monocle, It's all over isn't it? Doctor Who, a British institution so unique and wonderful reduced to this b from a user called Dr. Rachel Lindbergh, it was awful, the dialogue, the plot, the acting, all of it was cringeworthy, not a scene can go without the message being thrown in your face. From a user called Professional Judy, the trans sermon only got 5.08 million on overnight. For comparison, Jodie Whittaker's debut at the, as the Doctor in The Woman Who Fell to Earth got 8.2 overnight, her second season debut got 6.89, her third season got 5.81, time to give it a rest. And that is a very good point, this alone should prove that the BBC cannot revamp this series as the people are not returning, and when news of what is in this episode spreads, that viewership for the next episode will drop. That is my prediction. From user Blackadder1983, LMAO what? You can F right off Russell with this. This is the most R word thing you've ever said. I can't say these words on YouTube because, well, I don't like it. Of course, the screenshot here is not actually referencing the episode. It's referencing something else that came out prior to the episode, the Children in Need clip, where RTD expressly stated that Doc Ross was A, in a wheelchair, <clears throat> he's not, it's a life support machine, and B, that showcasing Doc Ross as he has always been in 2023 is bad representation. We had long conversations about bringing Davros back because he's a fantastic character. Time and society and culture and taste has moved on and there's a problem with the Davros of old in that uh, he's a wheelchair user who is evil. And I had problems with that and a lot of us on the production team had the problems with that of associating disability with evil and trust me, there's a very long tradition of this. What an idiot. Is it any wonder the overnight viewing figures are not that great? This is what he does for publicity prior to the episode. He pushes not only these retcons of beloved characters, but also social agendas that a huge portion of the core Doctor Who audience do not agree with. By doing so, your audience becomes smaller, more niche, and of course means your viewing figures will be down, and will continue to be more if you continue to do this. But also, and this is on a personal note, does Russell not understand the internet is forever? You see, no one likes a hypocrite, especially one who just wants BBC and Disney contracts. What do I mean by this? Well, you heard him say this. I had problems with that, and a lot of us on the production team had the problems with that, of associating disability with evil. And trust me, there's a very long tradition of this. Yeah, well, back in his first term as showrunner, he also said this. You know, you bring back the Cybermen, they're from a parallel world, so we can do our own thing with them. When you bring back the Master, he is regenerated, and so every Master is as different as every Doctor is different. It's quite important to remember, I think, this is literally Davros. A brilliant creation. It's literally the same man. So I wasn't out to reinvent it in that sense. Excellent. And also, why reinvent one of the best villains ever? Well, I don't know what more you add to Davros. We're not reinventing a classic, we're refurbishing a classic, I think, and, and reintroducing it to a brand new generation. It's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I had problems with that. Now, before I end, I just wanted to note, am I making fun of all this? Yes, of course I am. And yes, I know many people can't take a joke. And yes, I know that the TikTok generation are unable to understand the concept of diversity of opinion. <clears throat> it's the only diversity they fail to understand. <clears throat> but for everyone watching this, just know that I don't dislike this. I don't hate this. 
I don't feel anything for Doctor Who anymore. Like so many now, the core fans that were, I feel apathy. And yet, something else. A newfound in enjoyment. Why? Because I can make fun of this without being saddened by something that I wish I could have shared with my children one day. Instead, I'll have them watch something that is actually good. Something that can't really be messed around with. Old 80s Transformers cartoons. I think that's the way to be. Yes, I think, I think that'll be best.